Welcome back guys, here we go again with another episode of Techtopia. Now I'm kind of in a rush, at least just for the intro, because we have something pretty important to talk about. There's some things I want to get done, right? But currently, I went ahead and I got 29 emeralds from this merchant. I wanted to get this on recording, but I kind of forgot to, and I just did it. I sold some birch wood, and I sold two pairs of diamond boots. So, you know, 26 emeralds just from diamond boots alone, pretty great. And then we also have a nomad that I want to take advantage of right now. Because for today's episode, I don't need another bard. We are going to be building a kitchen. So we're going to need a chef, but I also want another farmer. And I only have one green coat right now. So that's why it's kind of important that I'm speeding along in here. Actually, this might be a great time to introduce the rancher. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. We'll turn our person into a rancher. Uh, we do have quite a bit of farmers. They aren't really able to keep up with these fields, but that's okay, I think. So let's go drop this on our nomad. Let's see if we can find him. Well, there's Daniela. We need our nomad, though. Daniela is our green coat. But here we go. Here is our nomad. Come here. What is your name? Oh, goodness. Uh, that's, that's a name. Uh, let's pop you right there. Voila. Welcome, Mr. Velour. Let's go. You are our new rancher, so I guess that's going to be also part of the episode, setting up at least a small pen for him to actually be working. Because now, now that we have a rancher, we have like a sustainable amount of food. So with the kitchen and getting a chef, that's going to be turning this villager food into better villager food so that they can have better things to eat. And that really beats out what I'm giving them. I give them baked potatoes. And I give them steak, pork, mutton, everything that they can ever want, except I made it. So it doesn't have that green tag on there, so it's not as good for them. The game knows the difference in between each one. Alright, I'm going to throw a weird cut in here because I had to stop recording and I was talking way too fast. I was just really excited. So excited. Uh, we got our rancher now, right? I hope everything I said makes sense about the villager food. It's quite important that a chef cooks the food for them. So now that we have a rancher, I don't want him walking around too much and not having a job. So let's do that first and then get into the kitchen. I already have a plan for it. I I did some stuff in creative. And if you follow me quite a bit, you know that's not typically what I do. But I sat down with the future Mrs. Gnome and we kind of just designed something together. It was a lot of fun for us to do, so uh, it turned out wonderful. And it's not going to be exactly the same. It's more of like a rough, you know, estimate of what it is. So I'm excited to be getting into that. And But we do need to set up a ranch. And where, where exactly do I want this? We have to think about the city planning, right? So we have our library, you know, we have our lumber area, then we have our farms, and then we have our mine shaft like in, a mo in the most inconvenient spot. I will probably move that at some point in the future, actually. I'm not really happy of where it's at, because uh, eventually I would like to make the storage room bigger. It'll probably be, still be an L shape, but it'll be quite, quite a bit bigger. And so what I'm thinking with the ranch is that we will put it probably over here, right? You know, this was quick, but I've already changed my mind about how I want to go about this. I think I'm going to move this little field here over by a few blocks so that we can run a nice formal path right through here, and then that will go up into our ranch area. I think that'll look really nice if we separate, have, you know, have four fields over here, eventually have four over here. I feel like that's plenty for even a max-sized village to have eight complete fields. So, you know, I think if we have a nice road going through, we can put some lights on each side eventually. I'll put, I'll make sure there's a five gap in there. That way we can account for maybe some lighting or something like that. And that was really quick. Uh, I think, are you, are you okay there, buddy? Are you okay there? Yep, they're good. That was a fast, that was easy. Our guard is actually getting pretty high in level. I think she's level 21, 22, something like that. Last time I checked, so that's pretty neat. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to get you out of this rain. I'm going to get that at least the 
path dug out. I don't think I have enough resources for that. And then I'm going to terraform this. Maybe get a... Oh, goodness. I need to save her. Uh, oh, that's our bard. Run, bard, run. Where is the threat? All right. So I got a pen set up. Now we need the animals in it, but we also need a token. And the animal I'm thinking of will be the cow. Ooh, wow. That's 28 emeralds. That's a little more than I thought. That's okay. Uh, we'll go and buy that. Uh, I need to go ahead. I need a couple item frames. I'll go pick those up real quick and we'll go take a look at what we got. All right, let's go ahead and slap that on there. It recognizes. Sweet. Uh, eventually, we will go ahead and make a nice little, you know, pen area for these guys. You know, make it look really nice. But for now, it's functional. And that's kind of all I'm worried about at this point. That this was not part of my plans for today. So I'm trying to keep it short. Uh, but we got this road going through. I'm actually really happy I separated, you know, each of these fields. I think that's going to be really nice instead of just having... Eventually, this is going to be gravel. I did not want sand. Uh, that'll be gravel in here, but it's better than just a huge mass of field. I'm glad that I split it up, and it's still going to something that has to do with food. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now I just need to go ahead and get some cows. Luckily, I buried some over here quite a while ago. So let's go ahead, carefully in the night, go ahead and get these guys to their new home. And they're in. So we got three cows. These are not villager cows. So basically, they have to be fed and bred with villager wheat. And eventually, they will become villager cows. And since we don't have the villager cows, that means we can't get villager steak. Because the chef also has to use villager steak or the beef to make it steak. So it's a full process chain. And we're going to get there one day, I promise. Uh, so we just have to wait for our rancher to do his thing. He'll come over, feed these guys, breed them up, fill the pen, and next we need a butcher. I just thought about that. There is a process in between. Yep, one more process before we can start getting steak, but that's okay. We're going to start focusing on the kitchen next. I'm going to go ahead, fix up our wall a little bit, and I do have some stuff I want to talk about real quick. Uh, over yonder, I went and found some dark oak. Like I promised, I did find that in between episodes, and in the process, I found a little hole and inside of said hole was a skeleton spawner and a spider spawner. So that's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to make use of that shortly because, you know, an infinite amount of bone meal is going to be pretty great. I'm not going to lie. That's going to be amazing. It's going to help out so much around here. And I'm pretty excited about that. And I do have some other plans. Now, obviously, we need a wall, right, to protect ourselves from zombies and whatnot. But... The way I want to go about this, I want to section off the village, but not with crazy high, like 10, 10 block high walls. I'm thinking like two and a half, you know, and have like a nice little wall with a little walkway on top uh, with a little canopy, something really small, but something that's not going to like obstruct our vision terribly of the village. I still want to like be able to see all the buildings and stuff like that from a decent viewpoint. And I'm pretty excited about that because this building's going to be going away. So that leaves this whole area as a farming area and I'm, we can section this one off. We can section off just like the different zones. So, you know, we'll have like a residential zone where they're all kind of sectioned off and we'll have nice little, nice little gates that, you know, are protected by a guard. We can put guard posts that way they actually patrol on the roads and whatnot. I think it'll be really cool and I'm excited about it. But our next step is going to be getting into this kitchen. And before I do that, I do need to, you know, seal up the wall and protect the village, light things up, all that fun stuff. So I'll be back shortly. While I was out, I was also able to get all of this food. And that's actually going to help quite a bit. As you see, they were getting pretty low, at least on the meats. Uh, they eat carrots still. Not really 100% sure why. Maybe it's they have to balance a diet. Still not 100% sure on that. But hey, there you guys go. Have plenty of good food. I know that that's great for their saturation and whatnot, so I think they'll be happy for quite a while, especially since there's multiple, you know, different kinds there. I could do with a little bit more pork, but, you know, I can't complain too much with it. All right, so to get things started, I think we're going to stick with our main themes, right, which is going to be spruce as more pillars, and we're going to have jungle as floors. 
I'm thinking this place is going to have like a little porch. What I'm kind of thinking of as, you know, people would come here, you know, they would sit down, have a meal at the kitchen, you know, at this like little restaurant. That's not how it works in the game, but that's kind of where my imagination went with this. And I think it'd be kind of cool to have, you know, three tables up here with some chairs. And basically what we're going to be doing is kind of just basically what's over there in the library kind of pulling in a lot of those same themes you know we want this to blend together with the rest of the village so it's quite important that we stick to the same stuff so if I go ahead get a couple of these in we can start kind of getting a feel for what this is gonna look like all right so I got the floors in and I got the pillars in so this is more of our general shape I did take back the floor a little bit because I had this thought that we could go ahead take some stone brick let's actually quickly go over here and turn some of these into slabs let's say I don't know probably let's just do a, let's say a stack that works for now if I need more I need more that's okay uh, let's go ahead take our stone brick we can I need a ghost block there that's just my building you can go ahead rip that out save some resources and then we'll come all the way around just like so this will wrap around the entire building and underneath or on top of our spruce we'll go ahead and throw some leaves and then we'll top that with some slabs I love the way this looks you know it gives it a, an inch of depth it adds some greenery into it it's really nice and then we can go and take some spruce just like so run our spruce all the way to the ceiling then we can give it some windows I'm thinking let's see here if I come in by two yeah we can leave a nice little two gap in the middle have two nice two by three windows just like so and then I will go ahead put some yellow pane glass in there well, let's go ahead grab that out I'm gonna need some more actually make up a couple voila and then we can go ahead throw these in and that's going to be our basic wall design. Now I have to wrap that all the way around, except let's take a second to go ahead and make a personal fireplace for this place. All right, so this is going to be kind of like the formal cooking area for our chef. Granted, they cannot use the fireplace and we're going to have furnaces in here and whatnot, but I want it to be there for the aesthetic. So we can go ahead. Let's throw some stairs like so we'll throw a slab what I'm thinking is I'm gonna have to change out some of this wood to be you know a stone type so it doesn't burn but I do want a nice little fire probably right here we'll probably put I'll put a piece of another rack right there and then we'll have a consistent fire that means I'll have to go to the nether for the first time on this series so that's pretty exciting uh, let me go ahead rip out all of this floor is going to have to go because these are all adjacent blocks those are going to have to go and be turned into other stuff i'm thinking yeah maybe we'll just continue the brick look and you will be able to see all of this so i think we'll keep that the same as well and then we can take this all the way out and drop it down probably come out let's say one block just like so and I will go through and rip out all the blocks that aren't going to be seen that way I can save on materials but for now it's kind of the wasteful stage where we kind of just do what looks best and go with the flows so I want to make this look like an actual chimney right so that means that it has to go the smoke has to go somewhere and to do that I'm thinking I'll do some Thing with some stairs we'll take those place them upside down on each of these blocks that should give us like a little vent ish looking thing I guess you can say and we'll take some stone or some brick slabs or a brick slab go like so break that spruce go ahead and get rid of all these blocks I used for temporary and with a little bit more work it just needs to be filled out I think I do need a little bit more cobblestone in there but from the back side, that's what we got. It might have to come up one more block, might not. We shall see when we get the actual roof on. And to do so, I have to go get some more stone. And to get stone, I need cobblestone, so I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. But here we go, here's a little, I put the walls in, I got all the foliage in. It looks fantastic so far, and we got our porch. This is the interior. I like how this turned out. It looks super big and, you know, 
really grand. You know, it's supposed to be the centerpiece of this kitchen, and I think I pulled that off. Uh, we have this little ledge. I thought that'd be great, you know, for... It's a kitchen. You need a lot of space to prep meals and whatnot. So you got that. I'm going to put some furnaces. I'm probably just placed them right in front because I think they have to be on the floor for the villagers to actually recognize it. Before we get too far with the roof, I also want to go ahead, take some stairs, and give this wall a little bit more depth. I'm thinking we'll do a nice upside down stair. It'll line up perfectly with this window, and I think that makes it look fantastic. So if we just run this all the way around, yeah, I like the way that looks. So let's keep that and go all the way around with it. We will, oh, I thought we lost our architect again. Uh, let's go ahead, let's get our kitchen first. It's still at 25, which is good. I was worried it would be a little bit more expensive because of how much the pen was. But now we can go ahead and get our chef, which is only nine. That's not too bad, that leaves us with 23, <laughs> but now we can get into the final stages of our kitchen. You know, we got our token and whatnot. So let's go ahead, let's finish up the inside. Now, there's a couple things I need. I need a piece of netherrack. I'll do that in between episodes and that'll look really nice. We got our little space to hang a pot and let's go ahead, put in all the functional stuff. So let's make, uh, I guess we only need one crafting table. I'll add that to the 10 I already have. And we'll just do it like, Huh? That works perfectly. Never mind. I'll take two. And so we'll have enough for that. And that basically makes it its own own space. And then we can come out here. Let's grab our door, our item frame. Door can go on the inside like so. Item frame can go on the side with our token. Just like so. Already registered. Now let's go find our little green coat. And there she is, Daniela. Welcome to to the community as our chef. Voila, look at it, it's so cool. I love the outfit for the chef. It's so fitting, it's perfect. So basically, this is gonna do us really good, I think, for the whole village. Uh, she's gonna go ahead, pick up the stuff that she needs. She's gonna take the, the charcoal that she needs. She should, I think she's taking stuff to make charcoal, but you know, she has coal, so we'll see what she does. I don't know why she's grabbing all of these things. Oh, she's gonna make golden carrots. That's so cool. They're gonna. I'm excited to see all the stuff that she makes. She's already level two, and just from picking up materials. So that's pretty sweet. How many materials she's already grabbed? With night upon us, we won't be able to see what the chef is doing today, and we do have a necromancer approaching. So I do have to be kind of cautious and a little bit quick here. So what I'm thinking is we'll have three tables just like so. This should be out of the way. I was worried about it being three wide, but it should be okay. Uh, let's for the outdoor tables, let's go ahead, just do pressure plates. On the inside, I do want some more oak fences. So let's grab those real quick. And then we can come inside and put in a nice island for our chef to cook on. So we'll just do something like so. Oh, there's our necromancer. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's sleep real quick, kill off all his minions. It's not going to be great for our villagers, but you know that's, you know, kind of tough luck. It's saving their lives, and I don't feel like dying, so that's another another reason to do it. Sorry guys, wakey wakey. Okay, with the necromance handled, let's finish up this build. I want to put some little shutters on here all the way around. I think that looks really nice. We need to go ahead, place our chairs as well. These are the best feature in the game. I love these things, these are awesome. They're so amazing. Well, we got our first villager food, which is pretty exciting. Jade here picked up the first of it and is probably gonna be really happy about it. Oh, dropped it back off, I guess, didn't want that. Oh well, alrighty, we'll see how that goes. I'm excited about it because that means their saturation will be much higher, they're gonna eat a lot less and it'll make our food sources go much further than what they are that way i don't need to continuously get more farmers which is going to be really nice uh, our ranchers starting to do his thing you know we got a baby cow from him and we have our kitchen i love the way it turned out i hope you guys feel the same way about it it looks pretty sweet i love it so until next time guys i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one bye